Hello and welcome to my channel Be Yourself. This is Dr. Anish Sharma and I am today telling you with the translation especially in case of rare carriers. After a very long time I am interacting with you because during this time I was busy in setting the classes for the medical entrance examinations. So let's start. Actually, a translation is the process where protein is synthesized with the help of the codons from the messenger RNA and it is the building block of our life. Protein is synthesized in our cell with the help of ribosomes, so we can consider ribosomes as the protein factory of the cell. Proteins are synthesized with the help of messenger RNA or we can say that they code for the sequence for the amino acid. Amino acid is the building block of the protein or we can say is the basic subunit of the protein. Amino acid is coded by codons which is the triplet of nucleic acid. There are four uh, called therefore uh, nucleic acid which is adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymidine. If we will code, if this codon will be not triplicate rather duplicate, then we will have only 16 codons. But we know that we have to code for the 20 amino acids. So it was considered that it should be triplet. Each codon is specific for each amino acid. AUZ case codes for the initiation of translations. These are some specific codons which have the definite functions. Whereas UAA, UAG and UZA codes for the termination of codons. Open reading frame. What is this? The reading frame without termination codon is known as open reading frame. Whereas a strat, uh, uh, I have said that there is a specific codon for the each amino acid but sometimes what happen an amino acid can be specified more than one codon so we can say that the codon is uh, so codon has a degenerative in nature this is due to the obel or uh, there was a hypothesis known as obel hypothesis first uh, understand what is obel uh, this is the tRNA and uh, it code for it has an anticodon for the codon in the messenger RNA. What happened? This position, GC position, which is the third amino acid, uh, sorry, a nucleotide basis, it can be have uh, any nucleotide sequence that can code, code with the any other nucleotide basis 2. For example, if there will be anosine, then it can also pair with the adenine or it can also pair with the uracils or it can also pair with the cytosine. So, we have here uh, one anosine we can coat with the uracil, adenine and cytosine. This is why our uh, one amino acid can be coded by more than one uh, codons. And what is Obel hypothesis? The first is that the first two bases of an a messenger RNA codon always form a strong Watson-Crick base pair with the corresponding bases of the trans of the tRNA anticodon and confer most of the coding specificity. When an amino acid is specified by several different codons, the codons that different either of the uh, the first two base pair, pairs require different tRNAs uh, and I have said that more than uh, one codon can code for one amino acids because of this reason the tRNA's specificity has reduced to 32 rather than it should be 61 for the 61 codons or we can say that if there are 61 codons then for the uh, the each 61 codon there should be specific tRNAs but here we have uh, because of this Obel hypothesis here only 32 tRNAs are required for to code for the 61 codons. Uh, for example, here if we will consider the, say, the second point that uh, first two bases will be should be di uh, should be uh, uh, be different. Yeah, these two 
बेस पेयर विल बी डिफरेंट वेल द थर्ड पेयर बेस पेयर कैन सो द थर्ड वन कैन बेस पेयर विथ मोर देन वन न्यूक्लियर डाइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल हेयर वेन इफ देर विल बी साइटोसिन एंड एडेनिन देन इट विल हैव ओनली वन कोडोन बट वेन इट विल हैव द यूरासिल और ग्वानिन दैन अपार्ट फ्रॉम द बाइंडिंग विद द ग्वानिन यूरासिल कैन ऑल्सो रिकोगनाइज द एडेनिन फॉर अ अमानो एसिड सिमिलरली ग्वानिन कैन रिकोगनाइज साइटोसिन for a single amino acid now let's start with the translation this were the basic points which we should have in our mind before uh, dealing with translation translation has the various place, uh, has steps like activation sorry um, activation of amino acids initiation elongation termination release and folding and post translation modification let's deal with uh, each of the steps one by one first with the activation of amino acid uh, i have told that there will be specific rna for the specific amino acid so, so uh, before initiating the amino acid should bind with a specific rna here uh, there will be a specific rna for the amino acid and this will form amino acid trna and now it get activated for this there is an enzyme amino acyl trna synthase what happened first of all amino acid along with the amp bind with the active active site of the uh, this enzyme then amp get uh, uh, changed to amp and will form the complex amino acyl amp after that trna will bind with the specific site in or in the activation site of the enzyme and it will be then specified for each amino acid now this will form amino acyl trna what about the proof reading activity i have discussed about the on the dna uh, replication transcription in my previous video where there were the proofreading activity but what about the proofreading activity in case of translation it is uh, specified by the uh, energy or entropy during this reaction activation we know that each enzyme has a specific activation energy first activation energy is checked while amino acid binds with the amp to form the amino acid amp and second when it bind with the trna uh, i am explaining with with the example suppose valine and isoleucine these are very similar structure a trna can confuse with this because this only to this uh, vary only with the one structure which is methyl group at the isoleucine but what happened when these two get added with the amp then activation energy will be released uh, which will activate the Uh, binding with the trna but in case of valine the activation energy will be not sufficient uh, so uh, will be sufficient only for the binding with the trna or with the amp and isoleucine will activate only with uh, the trna of isoleucine specific when it has only a certain uh, activation energy this proves the uh, proofreading activity now come to the initiation after amino acid get activated then it will be synthesized in the direction of n to c n or the amino terminal to carboxyl terminal uh, this will start with a specific site in the messenger rna and this was discovered by or determined by howard dinches Din uh, in 1961 it will synthesize in the direction from the 5 prime of the of the rna with uh, with the 3 to the direction of 3 prime um, here the initiation codon is aug but what if there will be initiation codon n between the sequence in messenger rna then uh, this initiation codon is specified by the metha for by the addition of formyl group how this is added here it's it is first of all methionine will bind with the trna which is already for is the specific for formylated methionine and with the help of atp it will form methionine trna formylated methionine with the release of amp and phosphate for this specific enzyme 
which is methionine tRNA synthesis will is required. In the second stage, N10 formyl tetrahydrofolate will combine with methionine tRNA formatted methionine to form tetrahydrofolate plus formatted methionine and tRNA. In this stage, a formylase is enzyme used. The initiating 5' AUG is guided to its correct position by the sign Dalgarno sequence in the messenger RNA. This consequent sequence is an initiation signal of the 4 to 9 purine residues, 8 to 13 base pairs of the 5' side of the initiation codon. It base pair with a complementary pyrimidine rich sequence near the 3' end of the 16S RNA of the 30S ribosomal subunit. Then it uh, become easier for the uh, initiation or the binding of the 30S subunit of the ribosome at the site of the formatted methionine which is for the initiation of the translation. Uh, 30S ribosomal RNA has two sites P and A. P is for the peptidyl site and A is for the amino acyl site. Then it binds with the initiation factor 3 and 1. Initiation factor 3 will prevent the 30S and 50S subunit formation uh, prematurely. Whereas uh, initiation factor 1 is required to bind uh, uh, to prevent the binding of tRNA at the A site. After that messenger RNA bind with the 30S subunit. Then uh, the first uh, codon which is uh, for the initiation is uh, bonded with the help of initiation factor 2 and GTP which is the formulated methionine. After that 50 sub uh, subunit will bind with this and it will form the initiation complex and during this a GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP. Uh, now what happened then comes the elongation. It is further subdivided into two, uh, two stages. First is the binding of an incoming amino acyl tRNA. Then what happened? There will be the incoming of the second amino acid or second codon resolved by the tRNA. And for this, the elongation factor Tu is required along with the GTP. Here Tu and GTP just is required for the elongation initiation. After that, TU is released with the conversion of G, uh, GTP to GDP. And this will be again can be used during the cycle by again activating by the conversion of GTP to GTP. For this, elongation factor TS is required. It will convert again the GTP into GTP and this TU GTP can again be used during the elongation uh, factor. After that, what happened? With the help of enzyme peptidyl transferase, this formulated methionine will get shifted to the AA2, which is the second amino acid, acid codon, by the formation of pep, uh, peptide bond. After that, then uh, with the help of elongation factor G, which is uh, also known as enzyme translocase, well, this ribosomes get shifted toward the 3' end of the messenger RNA. Then, uh, when uh, this messenger, uh, ribosome is shifted toward the 3' RNA, this initiation codon has reached to the exit site, which is only present only in the 50S RNA, uh, so, sorry, subunit. This will be released out, and the second uh, amino acid will come for according to the codon present in the messenger RNA. This process continues and it will form a long peptide chain as per the protein required. But when there is, will be the termination site, which is coded by UAZ, then there will come the uh, release factor, which will release for the peptide, polypeptide sequence. Then it will release the tRNA and itself it gets released. After that, this uh, complex unit of ribosomes also get detached and now the termination is also complete. So in this way, translation start with the activation of amino acid and end with the termination of the, uh, the process. 
Another specific point is that I am talking about the, the prokaryotes and in the case of bacteria there are three terminations factor or release factor which is known as RF1, RF2 and RF3. RF1 recognized termination codon UAZ and UAA as I have told there are three types of uh, termination codon whereas RF2 will recognize the termination codon UZA. Either RF factor 1 and RF factor 2 binds at a termination codon and induces peptidyl transferase to transfer the growing polypeptide to a water molecule rather than amino acid. The specificity of RF2 is not well known uh, though it is thought to release the ribosomal subunit. So this was about the translation in case of prokaryotes and my upcoming video I will tell about the translation in eukaryotes. There, although both are almost similar only there is difference in the protein used during the stages uh, but the initiation is quite different in case of you carry it so don't miss that for that don't forget to subscribe my channel be yourself till then goodbye and have a nice day